Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a predictions episode of All Honor. I'm your host, Caden Lee. Today, I am joined by Ella J as we predict Super Card of Honor on March 31st, 2023 from Los Angeles, California. Ella, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you doing today? I know you got a whole week of festivities to do like in person, right? Yeah, I'm leaving Wednesday, uh, Wednesday morning. I'm going to head to Orlando and then I'm flying out first thing on Thursday at 6 a.m. So I am ready for an exhausting yeah. week. Yeah, I'm doing a lot just uh, at home. Like, I think I have like nine podcasts this week and I'm not even in L.A. So it's going to be even crazier in L.A., I feel yeah, it's a crazy week, especially with uh, anybody on the East Coast because of the time. Oh, like yeah. last year, Dallas, it, like there was a lot in Dallas, but everything, it, it's on central time, which is like the yeah. most ac accessible time zone, yeah. in my opinion. So it wasn't like insane times, like shows would start at, uh, at noon and maybe end around like 4 a.m. Yeah. But this year we have shows that are going to start at 3 a.m. for people on the East Coast. Yeah like for the culture and emo I, and that emo I'll fight. be asleep during that because I'm <laughs> gonna be working all weekend actually this whole week so like I don't think I'll be staying up late but luckily the timeline's a good place to keep updated on all of that yeah very true well let's talk about this show super card of honor from the Galen Center at the University of Southern California as I said earlier March 31st i believe yeah april 1st is mania day so yeah march mm -hmm. 31st i will be there i got my tickets i don't know where i'm sitting because i had a friend buy them but uh, i'll be there and i am very excited i obviously like this show all honor i do weekly watch alongs to ring of honor and i went to the first set of tapings that they held in orlando at universal studios but Ella, I know you had to catch up a little bit because you hadn't been watching live <laughs> because of Impact uh, around the same time. So while catching up, how have you felt so far about this weekly Ring of Honor held by Tony Khan? Yeah, so Thursday nights I work. Like, I'm writing all the news that's coming out of Impact and Ring of Honor, so I never really get to watch it live because that's during one of my writing shifts. But it's been pretty cool to catch up. Obviously, we've seen a lot of, like, indie faces that I maybe didn't know about before, but they're also incorporating a lot of New Japan and some stars that we haven't, like, seen in a while or stars that haven't been as prevalent so now that they're kind of maybe got lost in the shuffle on AEW, they're getting more of a time to shine in ring of honor plus we have some integration obviously with new japan and triple a to kind of representing in this so it's been cool to kind of see everything coming together the last few weeks yeah it's been a really good show like i i know doing a watch along to something you've already seen in person can be a little like i, I know <laughs> some of my co-hosts are like why do you do this if you've already seen it why are you watching along again uh it's because i forget those or you do your homework doing some of them yeah like I, <laughs> which i've told you i did but yeah i did my homework during the second set of taping because i had something to do that night yeah so i i had to work on homework during the second set but uh, I, I usually forget what happens at the tapings most of the time. I'm with friends. I'm taking yeah. pictures sometimes. Yeah. Like dark, the dark tapings they did a few days ago. Those were five hours. Yes. And I already forgot most of what happened. Yeah, or sometimes you get lost. Like I'm also now in any wrestling show that I go to, unless it's like one of my local indies here, or whatever. I still am mm -hmm. in the uh, routine of like feeling the need to like live tweet everything that's happening or like results as I'm there. So you kind of lose what's in the moment. I'm still every show I go to that's like a non-local show. I'm still in that reporting mode where I'm like, oh, I need to get coverage out. Like this would be good for social media instead of just enjoying what's in front of me half the time it's so bad yeah. that i'm just now that's just ingrained in me so like i feel that yeah that's what i was doing i was like tweeting pictures yeah. I, I wasn't spoiling anything yeah. but i was getting pictures out i was looking at pictures to figure out what ended up looking good i was making sure wrestlers were tagged and everything yeah. and it was a, there was a lot it's going time, on. At this it's stage. time consuming. I do that too. When I have to like, even if it's just posting photos, you're like, what is this person's ad again? You have to think of a yeah. caption while you're also trying to pay attention of what the match is happening. So like, I feel that I I've done that too. Like yeah. many times. For sure. It's yeah. But I, I mean, watching everything again, I, I think ring of honor so far has been fantastic. I think they've killed it with all four episodes. 
Uh, some have not been, like, I thought the third and fourth weren't as good as the first and second, but still good episodes and some good matches. And bringing in Zack Sabre Jr. on that first episode to defend the uh, New Japan, or I think it's New Japan World TV title is what it is. Yeah officially so uh it's but it's been really enjoyable i really liked it and i am extremely excited for this stacked pay-per-view so why don't we go ahead and get into it throwing up that graphic that they made a few weeks ago which is awesome it looks great and so what, let's there's two matches so far there was a third match that did get announced right before we recorded yeah. so we have one more but there are two matches so far that have been heavily teased not officially announced yet we don't have the graphics but we have another week or not even a week we have like four days so i think it's going to be announced so i, I did i grabbed some pictures we have a new trio that was formed in ar fox also part of another trio in a uh, proper aew with mm -hmm. top flight he joined forces with All Heart, Blake Christian, and Metal Leak, and they will likely be challenging the Embassy, the current Ring of Honor six-man champions of Brian Cage, Toa Leona, and Khan, the Gates of Agony. And Brian Cage, his contract expires after this match. This is his last match, so he's contractually obligated to work for AEW Ring of Honor. So, Ella, do you think that he's dropping the title, uh, that the embassy is going to drop the title, and that he that likely means he's leaving? I do. Uh, but before we move on, can you throw up the graphic, the, just the general show graphic again? Yeah. Do you see, look at the very, very top. Dolph Castle is is he not even on this card? Am I think I just... they're gonna I think they're gonna add him, but no, he's not on the card. Yeah, which is what that's just like the first thing I noticed because obviously you know he was what a trios tag champ before, but he it, lost, yeah, him and yeah, the, they, boys the boys lost, lost, lost the them. Yeah. But but that's interesting that I noticed he's at the top, but he hasn't been announced for any of the matches. So maybe like, maybe this is the way that cage loses. Maybe castle and the boys cost them the trios tag titles. That's it's the way possible. I guess it's possible. If Brian cages contract is up, then I feel like, yeah, it's obvious that they're going to be crowning new trios champs. And I mean, we've seen AR Fox, uh, Blake Christian and metal league kind of feuding with, with Mark Sterling and all of his kind of posse and all of that over the next few weeks i could also see them interfering though too is the thing so i feel like each team kind of has maybe some enemies that might be involved in this matchup so i can see it going either way but with the fact that the glaring fact that cage's contract is up mm -hmm. yeah i think it's kind of gonna warrant new champs yeah i think that the dalton castle thing is very interesting yeah. especially since i think that they're going to make this a tornado tag or a no dq yeah because when you have four we have your their opponents are smaller wrestlers they're mm -hmm. cruise they're all three cruiserweights and they're against big guys yeah usually when you have that and they brought out equalizers in those lead pipes a few weeks mm -hmm. ago that typically means they're doing a no dq or in the case of a six man likely going to be a tornado tag yeah so I, I think that that's a good way if you wanted to get Dalton on this show. I don't think that there's a zero hour because they have not told us there's a zero hour because uh, doors are at three uh, PST and the show time is at four. And that's the official pay-per-view starting time they as far as I know. could do it at 3.30, but that would they, be like they very could last minute. They wanted to do one or two matches, but that's also... There's just so much going on that I think they were like, oh, we're just not going to do a zero hour. But I mean, they also didn't announce the zero hour until the day of last yeah. year. But there's a million other reasons why, because Tony had just bought Ring of Honor yeah. three weeks, four weeks before that. But I would like to see Dalton Castle hopefully get on this card somewhere. I think a, a lack of a zero hour could be that they're going to add a little bit more to the main card. And that can be where they're yeah. going to add the time in. Or I mean, add another team sense. into this. Because like I said... Yeah. Like um like Blake Christian and them have been feuding with like Mark Sterling's people over the last couple of weeks. So maybe it could yes. be a, a four way or I would be shocked there has to be some like interference or some we're going to see something have to doing with Mark Sterling or Dal Dalton Castle's on this poster for a reason like that. I mean granted the card subject to change but yeah. with him right at the top obviously he's going to have should have some presence on this super card of honor. Mm -hmm. I totally agree, but I think we're, yeah, we're both in agreement. The embassy will lose their titles. There is, if you guys want to check my Twitter from a few days ago, there is a little bit of a spoiler from AEW Dark mm -hmm. about this match. Mm. 
but I'm not going to... I don't know what it is. So. Yeah, I know you don't know what it is, but I'm not going to say anything. If y'all okay. want to check my Twitter, it is on there. Some people mm. have posted some stuff because okay. uh, Gates of Agony did work dark. So there's some stuff that happened. Mm, interesting. But next up, unfortunately, when I looked through this card, I was a little shocked. Ella, there's one big omission besides Dalton Castle from this show. It's glaring. Do you know what it is? That's, uh, not a single match has been announced for this. No. There's no women's match. Um, I believe it's Athena versus Yuka. Is it just not official yet? So I was going to bring that up. Athena challenged yeah. Yuka Sakazaki. Athena, the Ring of Honor women's champion. Yeah. And the magical girl, Yuka Sakazaki, who's mm -hmm. also wrestling a few hours before that at Tokyo Joshi Pro. She's in a tag oh, match. Oh, yeah. You're, they're def uh, they're defending their her and um, Yama you got me Miyu wanting Yamashita. to double check. Go on. Yeah, her and Miyu Yamashita are working. Ma I think they're. Wait, no, no, it's no, it's Maki and Miyu Yamashita. I don't know. Yuka has a match on that show. I know I saw it, mm. uh, but yeah, that match is not actually official yet. I checked the Ring of mm. Honor website today That's to get thing. the official list, and yeah, not there. Yeah, she called her out, but yeah, yeah. it hasn't been made official yet. And I would there, be yeah, shocked. There's... Interesting. Yeah. No women's match on this show as of now. Um, I'm I'm not gonna add any more commentary to that, Ella. If you want to be my guest, um, I would assume that Athena retains. I mean, Yuka obviously she's kind of bouncing between AEW and TJPW. I mean, Athena yes. attacked her a couple weeks ago on Dark, I think it was, after her match uh, with Vert Vixen. So that yes. kind of set up to a little bit of it. Obviously, this match is going to be happening. They yeah. just, I don't know if they'll make it official. Probably Tony Khan is just going to end up announcing it. Um, I think it's going to be a fun matchup, but obviously I think Athena just retains, but I'm still sad that we have not seen Willow with any gold in Ring of Honor. She keeps getting opportunities and she is much worthy of it, but I mean, she lost the title match. Um, she lost last year too, which is so sad. Yeah, <laughs> Justice for Willow. I think this is going to be a good match. Like Athena's been really rolling since turning heel and I think gaining her momentum back. But obviously with the Yuka tie-ups with TJPW, I don't see her being like a long-term champ. Granted, there's a lot of space between Ring of Honor pay-per-views. So it's possible that they could just go away for a while and come back whenever. But I, I think if this is official, I think Athena just retains. Yeah, I agree with you. I think once they make this official, I think it's just, I don't know why they would wait. Maybe they want to make sure that Yuka isn't injured. True. From the TJ, like maybe something happens on the TJPW show and they're just, maybe Tony's a little worried about that or he's just spacing out announcements. I'm not really sure because they're, I mean, we already have, there's two matches that aren't mm -hmm. announced and one just got announced today. So I think it might just be a spacing out of announcements. What time Tony is the TJPW show again? It's at noon and this show's at four. To be fair, last year, Ty Valkyrie had what? Had Bloodsport? And then she showed up at Impact. Granted, she wasn't wrestling. Oh, but, yeah. Minoru but she Suzuki, had that quick turnaround. Yeah. Minoru Suzuki worked Impact. And then he went, and then he worked Supercard against Rhett Titus. And then yeah. he worked Spring Break. Yeah. So he worked those three shows in a row. So yeah, I, I'm not, I think it, I think she's going to be there. I think there's just yeah. maybe, there's got to be a reason why. But yeah. Uh, I agree with everything you said, though. I have Athena retaining. Yeah. She's been killing it since turning heel. She found a character that really yeah. works for her. She's really good with the fan interactions as a heel, too. So I'm excited to see what she does in this reign as the champion. We'll see. I'm surprised but, they haven't. But then again, if we just got a match announced just now, then yeah. that... That should be uh, the last match announced would be Athena and Sakazaki then at least. Granted, yeah. they, I still think they should announce something for Dalton Castle. If not, he's going to be involved in that trios match. So we'll see. What I happens. agree. I'd also add an undercard women's match because they've been yeah. building. Uh, I know Billy sure. has a lot of uh, yeah. Billy Starks has Buzz. a lot of booking. She's also working that TJPW show. Yeah, but I would like to see Billy Starks or maybe Trisha Dora do it. Like yeah, because Trish, Trish has gotten two wins. So yeah, and Billy um, Billy faced Trish on that first episode. Yes. so maybe a rematch. That'd be fun. Maybe, huh? I don't know. There's gonna be a lot of people in town, so yes. we could have some. Um, I don't know what could happen. 
Yeah. But now to the official card, and there are, oh my, these matches, every single one is amazing. But I, I think this is going to kick off the show, so let's start with this. The Reach for the Sky ladder match announced on Rampage a few weeks ago by Mark Briscoe. The Briscoes will be, uh, they were not going to be keeping those tag team titles. This match is for the Ring of Honor tag team titles that Mark Briscoe still holds. He, he uses his one right now. And in honor of his brother, uh, the late, great Jay Briscoe, who unfortunately passed away two months ago, this match obviously reached for the sky in his honor and really good tag teams. Lucha Brothers were the first tag team announced. We have Top Flight and The Kingdom, who have been feuding on Ring of Honor, and that actually even spilled into AEW Dynamite last week. Aussie Open coming through the Forbidden Door from New Japan Pro Wrestling, and Drillistico and Roosh, another guy coming through that Forbidden Door, Drillistico from AAA, uh, representing Los Facciones de Ingobernables. So, Ella, this is going to be, um, let's just say, a banger. I, I think. Oh, it the, is. The, the I have no doubt about ever. that. It, it's kind of a, a mix. Um... Like, obviously, some New Japan representatives in there, AAA, AEW, Ring of Honor. See, I feel like for this, I know who I feel should win, but I don't think they're going to, is the thing. Well, who? So, I feel, so I feel, not to say that who I think will win doesn't, like, deserve to, but I feel like it should be the kingdom um personally i know they've okay. been feuding with top flight but i feel like they've already been yeah they've like matt taven they've been champions in ring of honor before several times matt yeah. taven is a former ring of honor world champ mike bennett's done a lot in there too um so i feel like it should be them you know they have that heavy presence maria obviously has ties to that too so i feel like just history wise i think that would be kind of a cool start to people who already have history in the company to kind of lead the way into this new era. And then maybe you can, you know, you want somebody who's re reputable veterans, you know, and then maybe you can crown a new champ. But I think kind of for like the pop effect, I think it's going to be Lucha Brothers because I feel like they're, I think they're going to be the ones that people are mostly rooting for going into this. Like they're the biggest baby faces in this match. Top Flight is too. Um, but I think like, Tony Khan wants to get that pop. I think it would be the Lucha Brothers. I don't see Aussie Open Aussie Open winning because they have commitments elsewhere. You know, they're not going to always be there in Ring of Honor or AW. They'll come in sporadically. You know, add the high profile energy to the match. Add another layer, a new style into it. They're kind of an attraction for this match. I don't see them winning. Um, Roosh, you know, Roosh has been going through AW and Ring of Honor, but like you said, Drillistico has ties to AAA right now. Um, not to say that they couldn't work with that. I could see them winning it down the line, but I don't think right now is the time you want people who can be able to commit to it, like time-wise, and other obligations can kind of hinder that. So for that, I think it's going to be Lucha Brothers, uh, since they're with the companies already, but I think it should be mm -hmm. the kingdom. I have two answers that I'm very 50-50 on. Okay. And one of them is what you said, the Lucha Brothers. I, I think that, and the other reason, the other team I have is Top Flight, mainly because these are two tag teams made up of brothers. Penta and oh. Phoenix, brothers, Top Flight. Darius and Dante, also brothers. So in a Reach for the Sky ladder match honoring Jay Briscoe, I think having brothers win is perfect. Yeah. I'm leaning, my mind says to lean the Lucha Brothers because they've been with Mark Briscoe as of late. They had the yeah. trios match. On uh, yeah, the trios match against uh, Tony Nice, Smart Marks or not Smart Marks, uh, Tony Nice, Ari Davari, and Josh Woods. They've been kind of do they did that little mini feud mm -hmm. for three to four weeks. So I, I think that they make the most sense because they've been with Briscoe. But if I'm going with my heart, I pick Top Flight. But I, I'm gonna stick with the Lucha Brothers. It's yeah. Los Angeles, heavily Hispanic crowd. Yeah. I think that, that that's a really good moment and it makes sense for me to go with them. Yeah, I didn't even realize that – I didn't think of the connection that they obviously have with Mark Resco. I think that deepens the kind of – that feel-good moment and plus they'll yeah. get a – the crowd loves them. They'll get a good pop. That would yeah. – I feel like if anybody's going to – not dethrone, you know, the Briscoes, but take the place of them, Lucha Brothers is a solid choice, to be yeah. honest. Well, we just talked a little bit about – Drillistico and Rouge having those ties to AAA. 
We've got some more ties to AAA on this show as the Triple A Mega Championship will be defended as Elio Elio. I always get the name wrong. Elio Del Vikingo, who made a name for himself in the International Dream Match on AEW Dynamite last week against Kenny Omega. He will defend that championship against Commander, who also got recently spotlighted on AEW Dynamite on the Go Home Show to Revolution in the Face of um, the Revolution in a ladder, ladder was, match. Yeah, the Face of Revolution ladder match. I was like trying to think about the gimmick of that ladder match. Yeah. Was, we have another gimmick ladder match we just talked about. I'm like, oh, which ladder match is it now? Yeah, Commander is a great luchador. He he really wowed people with what he did, and I knew he was going to do it because I watched GCW and Vikingo. Yeah. Amazing. This match is uh, another, like, we're just banger after banger on this show. I think Vikingo is retaining here. I don't I don't see a world where Commander can win the title, but yeah. I'm excited that this crowd is going to get Vikingo and that they're giving him a they're giving both of these guys who killed it in their two matches in the month of March. I'm excited to see Tony Khan giving them a showcase. Yeah, admittedly, this is obviously the match I know least about. But just like you said, from their showings, just in the face of the ladder match um, with uh, with Commander, he had some great spots in there. And then obviously, Vikingo's match with Kenny Omega that got five stars, right? If I five recall stars. correctly, I think obviously if he's going to lose to Kenny Omega still that's still an impressive showing and so despite that loss i think they're going to want to get him back on the right track and have him retain here i think it's i think it's going to be an underrated match on the card and again this is just me saying it just from the brief window that i've seen these two in i think it's going to be that kind of i think it's going to be that banger we're going to get a lot in of the the tag team match to crown that but this is truly going to be the most like high energy match on the card that i think is going to be a really underrated bout and i think has the potential to kind of revitalize the crowd you know yeah i agree i said this weekend when they announced it on some shows i was saying this could either be a- amazing or could get some botches and it could be a little bit of a train yeah. wreck True. If you if you know if you've watched Vikingo matches, uh, I, I love Vikingo, but he can botch from time to time. So that's my biggest worry, to be perfectly honest. Especially with uh, a guy like Commander, who is really good, but again, yeah. when you're doing those high those high moves and our high risk moves like these two guys do, you could get in a sticky situation. But I think that both of these guys in AEW have proved that on those big stages they can do it. So I'm really excited to see. Vikingo mm-hmm. retaining and now into the match that I might be looking most forward to, but there's so many that are so good, but it's mainly yeah. because of one guy, one guy who has not wrestled much in the last five years. I have never seen him wrestle in person. I've never seen him in person, but when he showed up at forbidden door to save orange Cassidy and the best friends, I cried a little bit. Katsuyori Shibata is answering the challenge for the Ring of Honor Pure Rules Championship laid out by Wheeler Yuta of the Blackpool Combat Club. Combat Club versus LA Dojo, LA Dojo. Wheeler Yuta against Katsuyori Shibata. Ella J, Katsuyori Shibata is working in the States again. I know. Well, I mean, LA, they're kind of, it kind of has to happen. They're going to be in LA. So I think it's a cool moment. Obviously, Will or Yuta is like hell bent on beating the trainer at the LA dojo. So, I mean, what a bigger statement to make than getting a win over Shibata. Again, you know, I was talking about time commitments and obviously Shibata is a very busy man. Like you just said, he's back in the States, which doesn't seem to happen a lot or, you know, at least doing a lot of shows, um, at least with ring of honor or AW. So if you want to talk about commitment, I think it's going to be a banger, but obviously if he can't commit long-term, maybe this, I hate that I'm that we even have to bring like not politics, but like behind the scenes stuff into this yeah. decision making. But it's just true facts. You know, y- Yuda is the more, um, not reliable, but he has the most commitment with Ring of Honor between them. So I think he's going to retain. I think we've been seeing a little bit of a, a little heelish Yuda. So um, I think he's going to retain. I think it's going to be a fun match. Um, and Yuda's going to get what he wants. He's hell bent on beating Shibata. And I think he's going to do that. Yeah, I agree with you on pretty much everything you said. We're not going to see Katsuyori Shibata consistently wrestle probably yeah. ever again, in my opinion. I mean, look at, he worked 
didn't work Wrestle Kingdom for whatever reason. Yeah. New Japan isn't letting him work, which is a little odd. And the whole, when he worked, um, Ren Narita, I believe is who he worked at Wrestle Kingdom 16. That was a whole situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, he worked Orange Cassidy in October, if I remember correctly. I think it was yes. October. November, I believe it was. November. Yeah, it was October or November that he yeah. worked him for the, all back then, the All-Atlantic title and yeah. had a really good match there. He showed up at Forbidden Door to save Orange Cassidy. So he's not worked. He's worked three matches in all of 2022. Yeah. I think he, yeah, I think he worked three matches, maybe four, if I'm being generous. Mm-hmm. So he's just not going to work a lot. And I think that this is a big win for Wheeler Yuta to beat the trainer of the LA Dojo, a former, uh, I believe, yeah, that's the G1. I think he won the G1, if I'm correct, or is the New Japan Cup. He won one of them. Um, he, he's one of the best pure wrestlers in the world, Katsuyori Shibata. He is amazing. And yeah, this is going to put over Wheeler Yuta big time. This is going easily his biggest win to date in AEW or I, Ring of Honor. I think it would really elevate Yuta too. Not that he needs it, but kind of, he's kind of the most underrated kind of dark horse in Blackpool Combat Club. I feel like more people are like Moxley, you know, Claudio, but then Yuta's kind of just in the background. And I feel like this is going to be really a cementing moment to elevate his stock and really, really impress people and make a stake for his own name. You know, he's not just in the background of BCC that it feels like. Yeah. He's also been losing on television a lot lately. I mean, he lost, back in October, but he lost to Maxwell Jacob Friedman in MJF's return match to AEW. He lost against Orange Cassidy a few weeks ago for the All-Atlantic title. So he's not necessarily getting those big singles wins. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like He beat Daniel Garcia to win this title at Final Battle, but he lost in the television match when he lost this title the first time in Buffalo, right out in the fallout to All Out. So (laughs) I think that this is a big win for him to get uh, on tele- on a pay-per-view, on television, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. I mean, te- it's on pay-per-view, but still yeah. it's, te- you know what I mean? It's televised. Everyone's going to be watching this. And beating Shibata, what else could you ask for if you're Wheeler yeah. Yuta? In a group called the Blackpool Combat Club that is based on combat, yeah. and one of your leaders is the best technical wrestler in the world and Brian Danielson. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think it's this is amazing for him. I, I, mean, I, would I think you would get him point. back on track is what yes. I would do. Yeah. And show, I mean... If you're trying to build up this guy as a serious heel and build yeah. up the BCC even more, beating Shabbat is going to get you some heat. Mm-hmm. And speaking of heat, wow, if you want to get somebody heat, you have Samoa Joe win this yeah. match. But I don't, there's no chance in hell as Samoa Joe defends the Ring of Honor World Television Championship against Mark Briscoe. Mm-hmm. This match, man, like this is going to be emotional for everybody. There's not going to be a dry eye in the house as Briscoe goes to try to win a singles title. And yeah, I mean, (laughs) how are you feeling about this? Do you think that this is uh, like the conclusion is inevitable? Hmm. I feel like Tony Khan needs to at least get somewhat of a feel good moment. So if Lucha brothers don't win like the tag titles, then Mark Briscoe absolutely needs to win this match. I think Mm -hmm. he's going to have at least one or the other because they have those ties to Jay Briscoe, you know? Um, The thing though is like, I don't, I don't know. We haven't really seen a lot of Mark in singles competition in ring of honor. Granted, this was, he's kind of, he's definitely forced into it now, obviously with the untimely passing of his brother. Um, But I just hope if he does win this, that they give him a solid singles push and don't kind of lose him in the shuffle. Because I think a lot of people, like when they think of him, they just, uh, what's it called? Parallel him with the tag team titles or resonate yeah. him with that, picture him with just those. So I, 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 some people might not know what to do with him in singles competition. So that's my only worry because he's so highly known for all the tag team classics. I just get worried that they're not going to know how to handle him in, in like singles, in the singles fold. I think he should win here and he will win here. Samoa Joe is a great guy to put him over. Samoa Joe, again, like Ring of Honor world champion, television champion. He was synonymous with Ring of Honor for the longest time. That would be a huge win. I just hope when and if Mark Briscoe does win that again, he doesn't get lost in the shuffle and his the handling of this singles run doesn't get off off skew i agree i think i've been saying for a while that the first person who beats mark briscoe is going to get 
heavy heat. Yeah. And I think with this title run is a great way to do that. Give, I think it's a good idea to give him the title. It gets Samoa Joe either time off or you put him back on AEW television, mm-hmm. which I think he should be on AEW television, in my opinion. I don't, I don't think he belongs in Ring of Honor right now. And it gets Mark in a prominent spot on the card, consistent title matches, gets to have a, a lot of good open challenge matches because he mm-hmm. can, he's consistently good in the ring. There's never, uh, there hasn't been a match. No, I don't, I've never seen a, a bad Mark Briscoe match yeah. ever. I've never seen a bad match with him. And so I, I think that's, it's going to give everybody a very good moment here. Um, probably a little early. I don't know how, where this is going to be on the card. Got to pace it right. I uh, would say be it'd be the co-main event. I would think so too, unless they want to go with the main event. But I don't. I think there's going to be another heartfelt moment in the main event. So yeah, I, which I, I think, think so, is going to be the world for the world title. I think the yeah. kind of. I think that this would be the co-main event. Yeah, it's interesting to see how they're going to lay this out because we've already seen Tony with Ring of Honor be okay with not main eventing with the world mm-hmm. title. He did that at. Um, Death Before Dishonor, where the, yeah. main, the main event was the Briscoes versus FTR in two yeah. out of three falls, and the world title, Jonathan Gresham against Claudio Castagnoli, mm-hmm. that was uh, the opener of the show. So this could, the main, main uh, the title match could open if they wanted to. I think like, it's going to be the tag there. titles opening the card, so, yeah. personally. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested to see how they where they place this, though, and how they do this. But I'm very excited. I do think Mark Briscoe is winning. Let me fix my camera real quick. <laughs> okay. I hate it when it goes off. Sorry, guys. There we go. All right. Well, let's get into our main event, a rivalry that's been brewing for decades now, as Claudio Castagnoli will defend the Ring of Honor World Championship against Eddie Kingston, who quit AEW a month ago, went to Ring of Honor, he said that John Moxley cannot stop him. He said he promised Mox he would not go after Claudio in AEW. But guess what? This ain't AEW. This is Ring of Honor, baby. And he's going to go for that title. Claudio believes that Eddie does not have honor and does not deserve the championship. But this blood feud will come to an end at Supercard of Honor as they battle for the most prestigious, one of the most prestigious world titles in the world, the Ring of Honor World Championship. Ella. How are you feeling about our main event at Supercard? You know, as of now, obviously, there's two matches that are still kind of one match that's unofficial, but there's seven matches on this card, right? So far, we're counting, what, at least three new champs? Yeah, so so far, we're 3-3 we're three, three on new champs. We've been pretty much in a in agreement besides the tag titles, but those are getting crowned new champs regardless. So right now, we're 3-3 three, three in our predictions, three new champs, three retentions. I don't think you bring Eddie Kingston over to Ring of Honor if you're not going to have him win it, because then what would be the reason to kind of bring him over here? Granted, AEW is very stacked in in stuff, and maybe you don't want him to get lost in the shuffle, but I think he came over to Ring of Honor for a reason, obviously, to settle that score with Claudio and get around the technicality of, I'm not going to touch you in AEW, but I'll touch you in Ring of Honor. But I don't think you bring Eddie Kingston over to Ring of Honor if he's not going to win the title. Yeah, I agree with that. I think in storyline-wise... Eddie's never won the big one. The biggest mm-hmm. win he's gotten was against Chris Jericho at Revolution yeah. 2022. So I want him to win. Uh, I very much want him to win. I think he is going to win. Claudio Castagnoli is currently in a storyline of the BCC versus the Elite yeah. over on AEW main television. That frees so it up then. Yeah, I think he's needed there. I think Wheeler can work both, but I think in terms of Claudio, I think he kind of needs to be uh, full time up on the main roster right now, and I think he should be there. I don't, I don't think he's needing the Ring of Honor anymore. Uh, and I want Claude or I want Eddie to get that big win so badly. I think he deserves it. And in storyline wise, look, there's a guy who's off of television right now, and this man, when he went off of television last uh, earlier this month. He said, I got, he said, I'm going home. Oh yeah. So I, is that ring of honor? I guess it could be. I badly want a story where we we have a while until, uh, until death before dishonor. That would be in July. That gives enough time for Danielson to return help and blood and guts or anarchy in the arena, whatever BCC are doing with the elite. 
Yeah. And then he can go to Ring of Honor. He continues his feud with Eddie Kingston that started almost uh, that started a year and a half ago now when they had they had that feud in the Eliminator tournament back in uh, they had that match in October maybe November of 2021. Yeah. So and they and even then like they they continued that Anarchy in the Arena they kind of continued that feud uh, before they were going to continue it likely at mm-hmm. Blood and Guts before Claudio Castagnoli took the spot of Brian Danielson yeah. in that match. So there's a there's a lot of things and, you can do. Yeah, and, and we've already seen Eddie go after Mox. We yeah. now Eddie's gonna go after Claudio. Um, I don't recall if he's had anything with you the Yuta yet. He probably Him and Yuta are no. cool. Okay. So um, I mean, again, he kind of has his ongoing story with the BCC that would kind of bring it full circle. So he's plowed through two of them kind of by that point. Um Claudio, hello. <laughs> Wait, do I have it? I do have it. Yes, I got it. I have the graphic okay. that fits perfectly for Eddie. And there's a reason. So Eddie Kingston, and this is what I want them to do with the storyline for Eddie. Eddie hates everybody. Yeah. Everybody hates Eddie. Eddie hates everybody. He has a million enemies. Yeah. So I would really like a story where Danielson first comes and Claudio is, so he has his main three guys that he has demons with in AEW. And the first one was Claudio Castagnoli who I think he's going to defeat. The second one will be Brian Danielson, who I think he will defeat at Death Before Dishonor. Or um, Danielson could beat him. I'm going to say Eddie's going to beat Danielson and keep this title. Mm -hmm. The third guy would be Phil Brooks, CM Punk. And also getting one more run. That would be a mess. That'd be awesome, (laughs) though. Because that match, they they didn't like. They didn't have an actual wrestling match yeah. at Full Year Twenty Twenty One. That would be a lot a- of drama, yeah. but I know people would. would be people would tune into it for sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. And there's a re and look, all we have to do for this feud, it's perfect. Eddie Kingston addresses his enemies. <laughs> oh every single every pay per view for Ring of Honor in Twenty Twenty Three is Eddie Kingston addressing his enemies. Yeah. There's three pay per views likely this year for Ring of Honor. Have him address his enemies mm-hmm. for every single oh, pay per view. Funny perfect it's perfect ella it's such a good it's right in front of you do it interesting yeah eddie kingston hates the world and the world hates him so fair enough i guess (laughs) yes but we yeah i I think we're getting a new champion crowned eddie's gonna finally get his moment we're gonna go off tv with the crowd chanting eddie 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 will they (laughs) yes 100 percent. they love eddie everybody loves eddie except his enemies of course Oh, I mean, he's with everybody. <laughs> Everybody's his enemy. Oh, Lord, this man. <laughs> but Ella, thank you so much for joining me as we predicted Super Card of Honor. I'm so excited for this pay-per-view. But where can people find you? You can find me where it says right here. If you go to, to other side, Twitter. Other side, other side. I'm pointing to it right now. On no, my- you're pointing. No, you're pointing the wrong way. No, on my screen right now, I'm pointing at it. You must have it mirrored because you're pointing on my Maybe. screen since you're pointing the wrong oh, way. On my screen, I was pointing it here. Sure, we'll do here then. Uh, yeah. You can follow me on Twitter at it's Ella J. If you go to the link in my bio, you can find all the information to all my podcasts and writing all in one convenient place. And you guys can find me every almost every single day on the Around the Point Network. I should have a lot more free time coming up just with some school stuff. And after WrestleMania, things should be much less stressful. You guys can find me over on True Heel Heat. Last night, I did the AEW Dynamite watch along where we watched the show where Adam Cole had his return match against Daniel Garcia. And there's a few other matches. Don't exactly remember because it's being taped a few days early. So I'm having to speak in the future. So I forgot what was on that card. Oh, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega defended his United IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship against Jeff Cobb, which uh, future oh, me, Kaden. Will... Jeff Cobb is God. I say that. I, I, wow. I love Jeff Cobb. I was there for his AEW debut February yeah. 12th, 2020 on, in uh, Cedar Park, Texas. Awesome. But yeah, that's where you guys can you guys can go find that replay from last night. And I will, as of the time this comes out, I will be in Los Angeles. I will be at Supercard of Honor tomorrow on March 31st. So just go to my socials at Caden, K-A-D-E-N underscore F-T-W. That's on Twitter. And I will be live tweeting as much as I possibly can from Los Angeles as I have 18 hours day, 18 hour days, have very little sleep probably going to lose about 15 pounds because i'm not going to eat anything all weekend but 
hey, I have VIP for WrestleMania, so that's what I'm going to eat. Bring your portable chargers, Caden. Charge oh, yeah. them up now. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to have a backpack. That's what I did last year was I brought a backpack with me to the collective because they don't care what you yeah. bring with you. So I put some snacks in there. I had my morning coffee. I put a charger. I had my laptop to work on homework if I needed to in between matches. Yes, I did. But you I better can't. not be working on your homework during super card or else I'm no, 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 going no, 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 to no. personally book my flight. <laughs> I did, what did I do? Home? I, did, I did homework during, um, oh, what's the St. Louis promotion? anarchy no 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 the one that shaza works a lot oh, I, don't I can't know. think of the name it's of it not now black label pro no not black label pro i might have done homework during black label okay. pro too though because they also they might have, yeah. wait, no black label pro was later but i think i also did yeah. homework during black label pro but that's besides the point uh yeah thank you guys so much for joining us on this all honor predictions episode for super card of honor check out that pay-per-view tomorrow should be a really fun show uh, if you guys want to save some money, get a VPN and go to fight.tv. It's going to save you like 30 bucks. And yeah, for myself and Ella, thank you guys so much for joining us.